All right, so create. We're gonna zoom in back to our location. At this point, do not click apply. I'm gonna keep what I have where I have it. Hey, one. How you doing? I think that is that. Yes, that's the that's the the guy. That's the mixer king. Uh, Juan here is a pro user of Quixel Mix Mixers, so I always see his work in the Facebook uh, uh, community, and he's done some amazing work in Mixer as well as um, his projects that he works on, which is uh, fantastic. Okay, so here is a bug, but I'm going to not apply the map. So do not apply the map. That way we can have this window function. Right, I'm going to go back to materials. Select the only material and use satellite imagery. Okay, so here, here we go. So now the satellite image has mapped exactly uh, where it should be. The reason why it did that is because we, which is, this is a function I'm gonna talk to Stefan about now. So since we applied the map, the texture satellite didn't have image here that we uh, clicked on, doesn't have anything to reference. And it's referencing this, uh, uh, window here in the custom base shape. So as I move this around, it doesn't look like the texture is moving yet, but if I were to say stop it here in the corner, it updates pretty quickly. The image texture is a lot higher resolution than the height map data. So it can take, depending on your internet and all that stuff, a little bit more time to sort of come in. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna take a drink real quick. Awesome. So then we got, Hey, we got a, we, we got a terrain. It's perfectly textured based on satellite imagery, but we can do a whole lot more with this. So let's now let's just in this biome, uh, let's create a new material. And now let's say we want, um, let's say we didn't want this sand to be, um, obviously this light colored sand color. Let's say we want this low valley area to be green. So let's go ahead and enable this and let's just hypothetically choose a, uh, a green. Some sort of dark, dark uh, green color here. Also, real quick, we have an eyedropper. Now the eyedropper is going to have some new sort of features that are very similar to Photoshop. Um, and it's actually quite similar to Quixel Mixer one on how the eyedropper tool is. So you see as wherever my mouse is, the color of this little tiny box uh, changes. However, the color changes based on an average diameter that's around uh, my mouse. So if I were to, you know, zoom in really closely, where there's a certain average around here that's going to capture. For example, if I went to, and this little eyedropper does any window. So I'm here in my left monitor and I'm hovering over my uh, Twitch dashboard where I can edit those little icon. Uh, let's do this. No. Wow, I apologize for that. I done, I done messed myself up. <laughs> That's okay. I got to see everything that's going on. All right. So I'm basically hovering. Where did you go? I'm hovering over the, the Twitch color basically on the Twitch stream. And you can see the eyedropper tool has changed to that Twitch color. Same thing. If I were to hover in this menu, if I were to hover over uh, the blue that's right here, it's kind of averaging out the blue and the gray that's around it. So um, I've, included a feature request to be able to control what that diameter is around the mouse wheel and how well it averages out and how well it feathers out. Anyway, so if I were to go to a location, let's say I'm just going to hover over these, uh, this blue background here to change from what the color is in the eyedropper to what the color I've selected, hit spacebar. So spacebar initiates whatever the color is that you've got hovered. So if I were to 
hover over the Twitch icon on my left browser, hit spacebar, it changes to that Twitch color. So that's just a handy piece of information to uh, get to understand is that the space bar will change to whatever color um, you have in your window. So let's go ahead and change this back to that green, that awful green that I was talking about. Okay. So now how do we go about getting this green? to adhere to exactly where this is. Well, this the height map to this is really low, so we can obviously be smart about it and use a height map uh, distribution here to sort of say, hey, I want this height range to be lower. I want the height, the top value here to be, let's say it's, it's let's say it's right here. A little bit lower a little tiny bit lower all right say we want it to be there and we choose the we choose to feather it up a tad well feathering is uh, really sensitive so but that's obviously going to be you know a little bit it can be taxing if you're not used to that but we have um, my point is we have a new distribution that is really cool we can do the distribution based off the satellite image so let's go to the add distribution uh, text here and uh, fortunately enough we have this satellite image option so we click the satellite image and you can see here that we have that map that has popped up so if I were to left click into an area, we're going to change the color of where we're wanting to select. So basically left clicking in here is a sort of a color selector. So I'm clicking the gray over here and you can see that green is masking to everywhere, not gray, but that, uh, sorry, that, that brown color, that brown reddish color that kind of looks like Mars. Um, I'm just left clicking over here and it's masking to a feathered amount of that uh, color. If we didn't want <clears throat> it to include as much, we can change the feather distance here. So this color distance here in the bottom, if I were to slide that down a fair bit, we can see this color is starting to change closer to what the target color is. You can see if I move it all the way to the right, it includes way too much, but changing this slider Keep going down to the left. We're adding green based on the target color. Wow, mind blowing. It's Photoshop. <laughs> so, but all right, I'm going to click the uh, over here in the white. And you can see the color distance. I'm going to feather this up a little bit. And, you know, it looks it looks kind of nice. So I can what I can do is if I want to say, hey, Let's let's make this feather distance really sh shallow. And the target color, you can see what we're doing now. So select the target color bar here. And that color picker comes up exactly the same way. So let's zoom in and get a really nice uh, white here. Or we can go through and select this blue. Again, it's it's trying to to average out areas. So we selected that. Or let's go here and try and select as best as possible this color. So you can see this color here is now highlighting here in the uh, eyedropper square. So I'm gonna press spacebar. So now it has initiated this color right here as the target color. Let's go back to our color distance, increase the threshold a little bit. Still has some adjustments to work, but you can see it's uh, it's trying a little bit. Let's open up. It's trying to be super specific, and it can probably be a little bit better, I think. Let's choose this color. I think this selection is a little bit easier in the window here, so I'm going to select this color right there. 
and you can see yes it's highlighted exactly where that uh, that piece is so the threshold we want it to be super close to that color or just a little bit additionally you're not limited there this is just a a rule so say we want to um, distribute uh, an effect on the satellite image let's add a uh, simple flow oh my music just dropped out so based on simple flow we can change the direction of that flow the strength you can see the strength of zero increase that strength it is adding a little bit of flow there let's try a different one let's just try straight flow uh, the other, I think straight flow is uh, a bit too much because straight flow is more of a universal, a universal feeling. So here's another one. So let's go to where was it? Aha, blur. I'm gonna blur the effect just a tad. You see, it's blurring the edges. We can add another one. Let's call it distortion. There's so many things you can do. So distortion amount, we can distort it just a little bit. Pretty cool. All right, I gotta catch up. So let's see. Yes, this is wicked. This is freaking sick. Yes, I know it's pretty sick. Yes, now we can make a table with colors for the whole terrain and use them. Exactly. So one cool premise is that you can make a table of colors, but you're also going to be able to make presets, which is going to be really cool. So if you have a preset of something like this, then you can use it without having to go through um, all these. Like, say, for example, you want to use the satellite image. You want to use a color. You want to always have it blur, distort, flow. You don't have to go through and keep adding these effects or these distributions. Um, under the there will be a, a preset for rules and a preset for distributions where I want to use my custom preset, and then you can do that. Can you export this as a mask? Yes. Um, before I do that, let me save because the export function for me is a little, a uh, little buggy right now pro creator three tests we'll call this one i think this is in chile and yet again the music decided to uh do some funky stuff all right so i saved this so presumably uh right here we're under the uh, save icon is your export presets so let's just say we want to export a color map or splat map, height map or normal map. There's going to be, let's see, let's try an empty function. And I'm not going to do this yet. I'll do this for the height map, but uh, presumably we can um, export a color map or splat map of just this color. I'm not going to do it yet because I want to go through the process of exporting the height map because in the last stream, <laughs> me adding, I think it was color map um, made it crash and they're, they're, uh, well aware of that uh, crash. So I want to get through a couple things before I presumably let it crash. But yes, you will be able to mask out uh, these different things. The real question is, can we import a road network of splines onto our terrain? So there's going to be a uh, spline. Yes, there's going to be a spline function uh, here. You're going to be just think of the spline function quite similarly like a, a, a Unreal Engine 4 where the splines you can create splines more naturally. Like, don't the road tool or the spline tool in World Creator 2 was really tough to put it nicely, and so splines are going to be a lot nicer here. You can also import. If you have some sort of uh, vectored line work, like if you were in AutoCAD or Illustrator, if you had vectored um, content that you're wanting to import, depending on that vectored work, I believe the idea is to use those that vectored line work to be, you know, hardline splines or hardline um, line work in here to utilize and go off of. 